we gotta start somewhere and this is where we start so we are taking a look at the team roster of the dkz boys oh look at these nerds servo rainer trigger and roddy i gotta say i look very big in that picture don't i guys i look like a colossal giant one of the the big goals for this year is definitely to drop a couple kilograms triple digits is not a good look on me so we gotta go into the double digits i love this picture of yona by the way looks like a proper handsome nerd speaking of handsome nerds dark is pretty handsome nerd as well i'm not sure why they're showing the head-to-head -head between dark and Cero, because they are not even playing against one another these are the matchups for our third match in the wtl code s dkz versus basilisk definitely by far and away the toughest challenge i think we've had so far wtl code a i think the very first one was a little bit scary because rainer couldn't make it so i had to play and you know roddy is the not bad but i do slightly bring our team down if you replace rainer with roddy <laughs> but this is just a, a banger of a clan war on paper mm -hmm. the head versus head might be showing the players with the highest score of the team ah could be two captains that would make sense mate i think you're onto something yeah out of all the best of sevens we've had so far guys this of course wtl is a best of seven format this one is close this one is tough the boys need to show up they already spoke about it last time around that they know this is going to be a tough one i uh i was thinking of making a tweet you guys think i should make a tweet let's make a tweet i think it's time for a tweet we don't tweet often but if there was ever a moment to tweet uh, Uh, apparently there's something very stupid can i uh edit this delete it and twitch yeah this is way better so something that's very silly as we take a look at the player profiles already guys seems like we're not gonna have to wait too long is that if you put a stream link in your tweet and twitter hides your tweets or something mm -hmm. I don't know, Roddy. I heard you don't care about StarCraft anymore because you don't tweet 12 times a day. I uh, I didn't even know that there were still StarCraft fans that really cared about people tweeting about StarCraft. But if that's the thing, then yeah, I don't mind going back and just doing shameless self-promos all day, every day. Nice haircut. Are you talking about Trigger or are you talking about Roddy? Or Dark? I got a haircut two days ago. I had to look... I had to look a little pretty, guys, on my special day. I am, uh, I'm feeling it, guys. Obviously, I already felt a little bit special because it is our special day. But this is just uh, one hell of a clan war. Six absolutely amazing players. Interesting matchups. Interesting starting maps. I honestly think this is one of these that could go either way. Uh, I feel like we can get a convincing W. They can get a convincing W could get very close and come down to the ace match i don't think there is such a thing as a bad prediction here should have gotten plastic surgery then mate marvin is good but he ain't that good that's true mar is good he misses you rainy you gotta stop by marvin again he is the goat his uh his little barbershop is actually doing amazing mate like if you want to get an appointment right now you legitimately he's fully booked basically for six seven eight days in advance every single time uh this has been doing really well which is awesome started off first business ever like a year and a half ago had to obviously start by handing out flyers letting people know that his shop is there and uh, he's done a great job in like just promoting around the neighborhood and yeah, obviously he has a lot of friends but it's doing really well he's even getting a third guy 
First he started alone, then he got a second guy, now he's getting a third guy. It's uh it's really awesome for him. Works incredibly hard, but he's good at what he does, and he's a very nice guy, so. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Trigger taking one map is already awesome for Basilisk. I agree with that. Uh, Trigger knows that as well. Trigger knows that this is going to be a tough one. According to these uh, stats, he is a heavy on the duck. I don't know if I would really go that extreme, that severe. I obviously think we can all say that Dark is the favorite. But I really believe in Trigger. Trigger has his moments where he can play incredibly well. He's truly on point. Uh, but even Trigger on his bad days is becoming better and better. And that's obviously one of the most important steps that these guys need to take. If they want to start duking it out with the best players in the world. Because you can't always have a great day. You need to be great on your average days. You need to be great on the mediocre days. Let's do it. Biggest challenge up to date. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. Let's go. Best of seven. DKZ versus Basilisk. We are undefeated in the regular season. Bottom right side of Neo Humanity. It's our Canadian. Our boy. Trigger. As he's duking it out with the man that has pretty much won everything that he could have possibly won. Besides IEM Katowice. It is our Korean Zerg, Stud Muffin, with a nice little mustache, mustache dark. I feel like on the camera you can immediately see, guys, that Trigger is feeling it a little bit. He looks more stressed than he did in the other weeks. You, you can see that this is a big match for him. There's one thing I still need to do, guys. My captain! I need to be the captain. Thing. I'll find it. As soon as the first best of two is over, I'll find it. I was together with my best in this jersey, but I don't know where it is. It's my happy birthday, Pika. Pika is uh, supporting uh, us as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, Pikachu92. <laughs> Thank you, Ayogu. I appreciate it. All right, boys, let's go. Big match. Trigger going for the one gate, fast expand, a dark, obviously going hatch first. Did go for the forward hatchery. This is a map where sometimes you see the Zergs take the rich Vespian guys very early. I think of Zergs that like to do that. I think of our Italian stallion. Thank you guys. We go opening up with a chrono on the gateway. Once again, an adept out quickly. Go to the other side of the map. A scout that you're not getting all in. Dark in the past used to just all in, guys, all the time. Whenever they were not top tier Koreans, they would look at it like, yeah, this is not really worth my time. Just kind of blink, flood, bailing, bust. And even if guys are sh obviously always good enough to deal with it, when Dark does it, it does hit a bit quicker, it's a bit harder. Than the average guy on the ladder and often foreigners in the past they obviously feel like okay i need to play very economic because dark is very good and if you then get all in it's double trouble and you want to avoid that mm -hmm. be nice guys Couple of links on the way, Adepts and an Oracle for our man from Canada. We know that he likes his Oracle openings. That's 10 extra links on the way for Dark. Are we gonna take an Adventurous Shade? Yes, we do. One of the Adepts did kind of get pinned back. But hey, this is a start and a half. What the hell, he got four? I saw three, I didn't see four. I guess he got one in the middle. Did unfortunately end up losing both Adepts, but I think losing both Adepts for four is fine. Now you don't want to deal with Zerglings running into the main base though. That is one thing you need to avoid. Four drones guys is a pretty phenomenal start here for our Canadian underdog. Dark shows up with the links, forces Trigger to use Pulsar Beam rather quickly. Obviously Oracles do not have infinite energy. Uh, no, the wall is fine. Sometimes you can take a third building. Trigger, please be careful mate. You cannot donate an Oracle in a game like this. Uh, I would like to see the Lynx trying to get a cancel on that uh, Nexus. The Observer showed it to us in the end, but 
Dark did not want to throw away Zerglings. Pulse beam activated one more time. We only have 12 energy, but it, oh, okay. I want to say that's still good enough for a couple of uh, drone kills. Didn't get all of them, but still got the double kill. It's a good start, guys. Very good start for our boy. We cannot get carried away. We cannot just assume that Trigger is now going to close it out with the first uh, follow-up attack. But so far, Trigger is absolutely passing the test. Hmm. Rain says it's not good because Dark plays better from behind. I prefer to see Trigger have a good start. I think it's also one of these best of twos, guys, where even if Dark ends up winning 2-0, like, there's not many people that are going to be like, wow, I'm really disappointed in Trigger. What is important is that for his own feeling, that he puts up a good fight, that he plays well, that he can execute the strategy and the build. Because there are victories within defeat too. But of course, we'd love to see him take a map. It is my special day. And I'd love to see our boy shine. Triple Oracle activates, pearls are beam. Trigger gets a cancel on the hatch as well. Like, it's a lot of little serious dubs, guys. I mean, some of these are not even little. Some of these are becoming pretty serious victories. Like, we're 5 minutes, 40 seconds into the game. And Dark is still not ahead in workers. This is a very solid game so far from our young Canadian. Win for Roddy and win for Pika. Add the note, Tomahawks wasn't naughty. Hello, Yona. Link's getting a kill on the probe. We're gonna try to go up to four bases. That's a five we can take with two adept, four stalkers. We're microing back to our other stalkers. One stalker did get picked off there. Nice little pick up there for Dark as he drops the Hydra then, guys. So we're gonna play some Hydra Ling. Does he even have a Bailing? That's no, right? Are we just gonna play Hydra Ling? I mean, I respect the Hydra, guys. I think the Hydra is a mean killing machine. Ooh, I like Storm though. I like Storm against Hydras. This is not a Nexus that was supposed to be cancelled. Trigger is gonna warp in a couple of extra units, but I do think we're forced to cancel, cancel, cancel. An absolute last minute cancel there for Trigger. Took out at least as many Zerglings as possible. But if we were in a slightly better position there, that was not supposed to happen. So Dark just got damage done in a phase in the game where he's not supposed to find damage. Still being a real nuisance here with the links, trying to get on top of the Stalkers, but the Oracles are here. They can activate Pulsar Beam. Uh, two Stalkers did die already. Stalker number three and four, very low on HP. Trigger played phenomenal for the first six minutes and 45 seconds, but in the last 30 seconds, we're kind of struggling with just a couple of links that didn't even have plus one melee. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate. Now one of our Oracles taking a lot of damage. At least we didn't lose it. Lurker then goes down. Infestation Pit goes down as well. We have a great first game here, guys. In As I said a couple of times, by far and away the biggest task and the biggest challenge that Basilisk has had so far as a team in these team leagues. Hey, Terry, Stocks, Amiket, Sid News. I appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. Hive on the way for Dark. An 8 minute Hive, despite the fact that he made all these links, made a couple Hydras. I trigger. Why are we doing these things, my friend? Oof. First 6 minutes and 45 seconds were good, guys, but the last 90 seconds, I feel like it's been all Dark. Found some momentum with the links, got a cancel, got a kill on a couple of the Stalkers, and now every single Oracle just randomly suicided itself. These are the oracles that we'd love to keep around to drop stasis traps, activate pulse or beam if the hydra count goes low. And obviously drop revelation. Okay, we still have one oracle. I thought we lost all three. I guess he left the low HP oracle behind. Right. Dark is definitely not wearing a hat. But his hair is picture perfect. Isn't Dark like in his 30s as well? Why are the Muslim and Roddy losing their hair so quickly and Dark is just growing more and more hair? I hope it's a wig, man. If it's not a wig, life is truly unfair. Nida's network going up, by the way. He's 27? Okay, fine. I want to see that nerd when he's 36. Let's see if he's still rocking that much hair. 
Stalker gets picked off at the Zell Naga Watchtower. Obviously, Trigger, if he can just stabilize, guys, get a few more Immortals. We have a chance. I do kind of always believe a lot more in Disruptors than I believe in uh, Immortal Zealot Archon. Oh, this army is in trouble. Can we recall it? No, we're going to try to blink the Stalkers away. Still four Zealots getting picked off. The first night is in the main is going to be scary, but it seems that Trigger has some spidey senses. He's kind of expecting it. I'm going to lower the sounds a little bit, guys, because I'm shouting already. I need to talk a lot. Great start. Two are best of seven. Well, obviously, every map counts. Nidus goes up in the middle of all the bases. Trigger, you have a couple units. You can warp in a couple cellars. He's focused on the army in the center of the map, guys. That means that this Nidus will most likely go up. And that's where things get scary immediately. We do not want to deal with Lurkers on top of our production. Lurkers will get out. Oh, no. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Ah, uh, kill it. Use the Oracle to kill the Nidus, at least. Kill the Nidus, please. Oh, it's very painful. Obviously, Darkest Army in the main ba in the ma center of the map is moving forward as well. I think this is a fight where Trigger can be fine. But that Knight is going up in the main. Now, Queen's hopping out of the second Knight is as well. They're going to be able to keep these Lurkers alive. If we would have just warped in a couple of Zealots, we could have prevented all of this from happening. But Trigger did not see it. Maybe feeling the pressure of the moment. He was focused on his army in the center of the map. Wanted to make sure he would not make a mistake with the High Templars in the return. He let the Niners go up. Lurkers got out and just like that it is Dark who takes the 1-0 lead. After honestly a pretty shaky start. I felt for the first 6 minutes 45 seconds Trigger played excellent. It was enjoyable. It was on point. Lost a couple of adepts but everything was going well. Until around 6.45 the links of Dark just they started finding some real momentum. They got a cancel, they got some surrounds on Stalkers. Uh, they got another good fight, picking up a few more Stalkers, forcing all the Oracles to use their energy. And it almost felt that that tilted Trigger a little bit. And he was like, okay, now I want to deal some damage again with the Oracles. And then he lost it to Oracles for nothing at the 9 o'clock base. And it kind of went downhill from there. <coughs> Yeah, game two will be played on Ancient. Trigger picking Ancient Sister and out of all the maps out there. I find that a tiny bit surprising. But I think it really comes down to personal preference. A lot of Zergs are quite fond of this map though. In CVT, but even in CVP they kind of like it. The longer the game goes, the heavier it is mentally for Trigger. I'm not too concerned about that. It's just important to stay calm. You could definitely see, I think, in the beginning of the game, just looking on the webcam, that Trigger was feeling it. He looked more test, uh, or tensed and stressed than he did in some of the other weeks. But that's okay. We live and we learn. Dark is higher than Rainer Fukov. Hello, Litho. Litho, I heard you have a present for me. I haven't opened it yet because I wanted to wait until you would stop by. But Vicky said that you have a present for me. I don't know which one it is. But I said I'll open it later when you're in the chat. <laughs> Alright guys, round two. Round two. Fight! Taking the 1-0 lead for the reigning defending champions of the WTL Code S. Dragon, or Dragon Kaisi Gaming's Dark. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of our very own. It's our Canadian Red Protoss player. Playing a pretty solid first game, it's Trigger. <laughs> yeah, I Vicky helped me get it for you. Alright, well I don't know which one it is mate, but uh, after I'm done casting the WTL, I don't know if it's just this match or both matches, I will gladly take a look at it. I will tell you when you open it. I know what it is. Yeah, but I don't want to randomly open everything. Even though I've already opened some presents. A lot of lights. <laughs> a lot of feet of Yui lights and a big, beautiful, big light behind me. Alright, guys. 
first game, I uh, I wouldn't be too upset if I was Trigger. But he probably... One thing that does sting a little is that he probably did feel like he had a good start, right? He was playing well. And then we made a couple slip-ups around the 7 minute mark. And that's obviously a bit upsetting when you work hard, when you feel stressed and nervous. And you're like, okay, it's going well, it's going well, it's going well. It's like, oh my god, what am I doing? And then letting the Nidus go up is also not something that's supposed to happen. Should we start placing bets on the Nidus? I don't think that Hero would be very happy if Dark uh, does an early Nidus here. What is the score, guys, between Classic and Hero? Because Hero is playing up next. Our second best of two of this clan war is Hero vs. Rainer. 1 0 Classic. Alright. Yeah. Gonna be tough for Hero. This is where Hero is DMing Dark. He's like, hey man, what about some ultra, ultra late game? Can you sneak out a couple Brood Lords and a couple Lurkers? <laughs> Give me my sweet time. I expect very similar stuff from Trigger. Uh, Oracles into Stalkers plus one, maybe double forts on this map. This is a bit annoying for Trigger. He's losing a lot of mining time here. These two links of Dark sneaking to the other side of the map rather early. Right after the first adapt left. Very annoying. Ah, this is bad, man. If I was uh, Trigger, I'd be very upset with this start. He lost so much mining time. Adapt number two was in the center of the map, and then it turned around to clean this up. But these two links, even if they didn't get any kills, if I was Dark, I'd be like, man, these are two very successful links, and I am more than happy with what these links accomplished. So slowly, am I uh, gonna get a video of Jeremy, you, the kids, with a little bit of Super Max in the back? I mean, I know I got the Discord gif from Jeremy, which was sweet, but I want to see you guys fist bump, Mox, Mox, Mox. <laughs> you know, I would do it the other way around. If you want a video for your special day from Vicky and me singing a Lewis song. I'd even wear up in Mercedes gear. This is the kind of guy that I am. <laughs> First Oracle floating around, not really getting a whole lot done. Do you guys remember talking about the previous game where it was 5 minutes, 40 seconds in, and Dark had not overtaken Trigger yet a single time when it came to the workers. Right now we are 4 minutes and 22 seconds into this game, and you can already see that Dark has 2 more workers than Trigger. This really is a night and day difference between the previous game. And it may not seem like a whole lot of things have happened yet, but Trigger's start was just a whole lot better on Neo Humanity. Now there is still plenty of potential with Oracles, with Adepts. Sometimes you can find even more damage just a little bit later. This was not an ideal start. Oracle movement here, a little bit shaky. Okay, Adepts make it into an Expulse Natural though. Here we go, matey. Here we go. That's good stuff. Can we get one more? I feel like maybe we could have got one more. Two adapts are gonna shade into the main base. What will we get in the main? Nothing. Maybe we should have cancelled the shade, but obviously hindsight. That wasn't too bad. Not as uh, good as the previous game, but still that wasn't too bad. And I think if we were slightly sharper there, or just being a little more on point, probably could have killed a few more. Triple Oracle is going to fellow away Queen. Okay, okay, zap zap by Queen. We'll take it. Trigger once more. I do feel like at least holding his own here, guys. Some people uh, obviously talk about bastards. Like, like, oh yeah, Sarah and Rainer are good, but Trigger is just not on the level. Well, I think you can clearly see here that Trigger is on the level and that he is able to compete with these guys. Now, hanging in there is one thing. Taking them down is often a whole nother story, but... I, uh, I think Trigger is playing a solid best of two here. There's no need to be upset about it, no matter what the outcome is. Seven overlords on the way at once for Dark, guys. Seven freaking overlords at once. I'm looking a little bit at the cameras. Trigger does seem stressed, eh? Seems a bit shaky, seems a little bit stressed. 
Deathstalk is getting surrounded here and is all right before a blink. Like, these are the little things that are not supposed to happen. Ah, uh, now we're forced to use recall as well and battery overcharge all at the same time. Again, it is dark. In minute seven, as we leave two stalkers behind. Couple of beauty arrows here on the side of our young Canadian. DKZ currently in the 1 0 lead, and Dark is looking mighty fine here in game two. Uh, those units were obviously supposed to be next to the pylon and the Nexus. If Lynx surrounds Stalkers in the wide open area, Lynx are amazing. If they're forced to fight Stalkers when the Stalkers are in the choke point, then with the battery backup, the Stalkers would have been totally fine. Like that recall wasn't even supposed to happen. Those Stalkers going down wasn't supposed to happen. And if those things don't happen, the other two Stalkers on the other side of the map don't die either. Not game over, but not looking too hot. And guys, we can't reco anymore because we have already reco. Thanks the Lord that Blink is done this time around. What just died there? An Oracle? Oh, a War Prison? Okay. And it seems that Trigger just wants to send it on three bases then, like Stalkers and have a couple Zealots as the follow up. As the Lynx are gonna try to battle these Stalkers. Not too much energy left, guys, on the Oracles, and Dark realized that that was a great fight to take, and it's an absolutely amazing fight for Dark. Oh, man. Game 1, I really felt like we had a chance, and things were looking good. Game 2 is a bit brutal. Just uh, a lot of little things not quite working out for Trigger. He, he looks nervous. He looked a bit stressed. It is what it is. This is now going to be a very tough one. We're not really transitioning into Colossus or Disruptors or we don't have Storm on the way. Trigger is going to try to make magic happen. We're going up to four bases. Stalkers only here are just not good. Throughout the game, I think Trigger has lost over 10 Stalkers. And Stalkers are uh, one of the most snowball units in the game. But they can look so hopeless and weak. And sometimes they can look so freaking strong. But for them to look so freaking strong and get all the value and my potential out of them, you need big numbers. I'd love to see how many stalkers have died right now. I feel like it's just... Uh, it's definitely a few too many. That tiny Link backstab once more around 6 minutes and 40 seconds right before Blink kicked in surrounding those two stalkers. I feel like was the most crucial moment in this game. It forced Trigger to use overcharge, use recall loses momentum on the right side of the map loses the prism loses the two stalkers just and lost the two stalkers at home regardless it's very painful surviving this swarm that dark is bringing out right now of hydra link bane is going to be very hard we can do the caster thing where we can be like Bat battery overcharge is activated and it's healing the stalkers up if there was ever a fight that trigger was going to win is this the one and the answer is no guys Dark is too big, too powerful. I was like, who's standing next to me? And then I realized it was Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> GG gets called. Dark takes a 2-0 lead for Dragon Kaizi Gaming. This also, by the way, guys, is the very first time that a player of Basilisk actually loses a best of two. So far, we have either won every single best of two we played or it's been a 1-1. Uh, since we've been live right now for a tiny bit, guys, and I t was playing ladder right before this all started, I'm going to take a two-minute break. And after this two-minute break, I'll be back with uh, Raynor versus Hero. Banger of a series. See you guys soon. Alrighty. I'm back. So we swapped the order. Instead of Hero versus Raynor being the second match, we are going to go with Oliveira versus Sero. Two world champions for life. Apparently, I got this one from Lethal. I'll open it after our uh, best of seven. Thank you, Lethal. I appreciate it, mate. I will open it once the games are done. Of course, guys, I'm going to be live later tonight as well. For the weekly, as we always do. But first, all focus on our difficult adventure here today against Dragon Kaiser Gaming. So we take a look at the player profile of the reigning defending undisputed champion of the world when it comes to starcraft 2 a foreign earnings now and then our player profile of the highest rated player in the entire tournament the man who's been on an absolute roll lately over the last few months it is the great jonas otala what a best of two guys two world champions collide and on one hand we have the man who made the impossible happen just a couple months ago and on the right side 
We've got the man who just hasn't been losing lately. Whatever he does, whatever he plays in, all he does is freaking win. Only Vera versus Saro. Map 1 Dragon Skills. Big match. Obviously currently 2-0 for Dragon Kaizi Gaming. That means that it's very, very important that Saro at the bare minimum wins the map. But of course, ideally, we love to see the 2-0 here. Thank you, Sky Pillar, for the 84 months. He lost to Max Pax in uh, KFC in the Kung Fu uh, Panda Cup. Was that when was that? Last Wednesday or something? What is KFC? Is that the, the Kung Fu? Uh... Ah, okay. I mean, technically, uh, there wasn't really a win streak because he also lost to Clam in the pigsty. But okay, then he did officially lose for a second time. Where is Hero and Raynor? They swapped the series because Hero is still playing in the Korean Weekly. Ah. <laughs> Let's go. Sarah wins 2 2. We're all tied up. And then it all comes down to Raynor versus Hero. Uh, you gotta take it one map at a time. You cannot take the man who is the world champion lightly. In the top left side of Dragon Skills, we are looking at the main base of a Chinese Terran player. This is Olivera. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the great Yona Sotala. In the eyes of many, the undisputed GOAT throughout the rich history of this video game. ZVT Dragon Skills, two world champs on the most glorious day of the year. Feels very good, eh? Vera is feeling uh, the pressure. His glasses reflect the screen in a funny way. Looks like he's got some blue eyeshadow going. <laughs> Was there a pick to any recently? It's a little while ago. Like two, two months ago, give or take. I think it was in April. Well, not even. Maybe a little over a month ago. Sarah and Olivera still practice together. I'm sure they play the occasional custom game together if they want to. They are obviously on friendly terms as they played the 2v2 tournament together as well. But if you know that DKZ against Basilisk is coming up, yeah. the one week leading up to this Clan Warrior obviously not playing custom games with one another. As you know, there is a realistic chance. I'm gonna duke it out. Sarah as well with the big breath there. Big sigh. Whew. Knows that for the first time ever, guys, Basilisk is trailing 0-2. In any of the matches so far in WTL Code A or Code S, we were never trailing 0-2. I don't think we were ever actually trailing at all. Maybe one time 0-1, but I can't even remember that happening. But we obviously knew that this was going to be a difficult one. Still believe though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pick's time might have been in March, yeah. So two months ago was correct. Because it didn't feel like it was last month. Mm -hmm. Last month, obviously, we had Gamers Without Borders. That's kind of what happened in the month of April. Reaper Expand for Oliveira. Very standard build order so far. Neither player doing anything crazy. This is the way that we expect high level ZVT to open up. Yeah, that's correct. Max packs against. Uh, Maru was the grand final of the biggest tournament. A lot of SCV pulls in that one. I was not able to watch these games live, but I did watch them back later. Ooh. I'm, um, I'm feeling stressed too. I'm not even playing. <laughs> Obviously, really hope that Jonah gets the job done here. Saroy's ZVT has been looking absolutely spot on, on point over the last few months. Uh, that was that best of seven loss against Clem, but ever since that best of seven happened, the, le the, uh, the last time that I watched Saro against Clem, it wasn't even all that close. Saro looked like he was performing on a whole nother level. Not totally sure what to expect when it comes to strategies from these guys. We can see Oliveira is playing very macro oriented. It could obviously be like three wrecks or triple CC into eight wrecks. I think it's not a bad build on Dragon Skills, and I think it's a build that Olivera is somewhat fond of, but keep a close eye on everything. 
Well, Sarah knows that this is a big match. And obviously, the man is passionate and he cares. Queens mm -hmm. keeping an eye on the first two Hellions and the Reaper. Roach one going down, okay. Tiny bit surprised, guys. I wasn't necessarily counting on uh, Roach play here. Could just be Roach's Ravages into well upgraded Link Bane, right? That's definitely a way to get there. Can also just be all out Roach play. Roaches into Hydras, into Lurkers. Mm -mm. Mm. How many con what country do I live in? The Netherlands, mate. 36, Mr. Fishboard. I have leveled up. And I was born very early on the day, so I truly am 36. I wasn't late. I was a couple hours into the night. I think I was supposed to be born on the 7th, but I'm like, nah, the 7th is lame. The 8th of May, now that's a glorious day. So, 36 years ago, in 1987, my mom hanging there a bit longer to give me a proper birthday. <laughs> is in the Netherlands a group of many countries? No, nope, it's not. It's only one. <laughs> that is not a thing. Elias and the Reaper working on the hatchery in the bottom left side. Sarah's queens are making their way over. DPS of these Hellions and Reapers should not be high enough. Olivera has not been able to find anything with his uh, opening units. Now, of course, he's playing a cautious game because he's playing Trap CC. He's not in the business of yellowing it, but it always feels good as a Zerg when you're playing a match where you know that the skills are rather close and you're six minutes in and you haven't dropped the drone. That's what Sero wants. That's what he's trying to accomplish with this opening. I don't want to say that's what's supposed to happen because even some of the finest Zergs in the world will end up losing a, a drone here and there. And we'll have to Queen sometimes out of position. So the Vera is working on his own rocks. A very passive start here between these two. I thank you guys so much. I'm going to go ahead and disable my alerts. I forgot that in this scene. I apologize. We'll have the alerts on in between the games, obviously. Uh, but since this is an important match, I want to keep the focus on the game. Let's transfuse Lance. But thank you, Petit Joey. And thank you, Jerry X, as well. You feel 36? Lately, I feel a little bit all over the place. There are some moments where I still feel like I've got my entire life ahead of me. And then sometimes I wake up and I feel like it's all over. <laughs> Tiny bit of a midlife crisis, perhaps, but... I'm still happy, mate, and I still feel good. And I'm excited to see what the, the future years on Twitch will bring. Hive on the way for Saro. A seven-minute hive, as we have an investor on the way as well. I don't know if that's Pig's influence. Telling these high-level nerds to add investors in a little bit quicker. So right now, guys, it really does feel like the first big fight is going to be a very important one. There is that moment where it sometimes feels that the Terran army can just have a little bit too much DPS for the unit comp that Serral's working with. But if Serral can weather the storm and take one good fight, and then we can start cranking out Vipers and work on our high tech upgrades, then I think it's going really well for Yona. As we've got Baneling Speed on the way as well. And even though the upgrades are plus one missile attacks, plus one carapace. He is uh, making a lot of links and banes. I wonder if that means that we're going to get plus two missile attacks or now plus one melee. Okay, plus one melee gets fired up. Marines of Oliveira staying busy trying to keep the creep at bay. Got a couple of crypto mods. A little skirmish with the links, but it really is this all out macro. A lot of respect being shown from both sides. Thank you, Gual Gual and Distracted Disney. I appreciate it, guys. Did you ever have a real job? <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> First of all, what I currently have is a real job, too. You may not think it is, but it is, mate. I make more hours than most people on their quote-unquote real job. One investor got picked off there by uh, the Marines. But I think going five days a week to the office for either ESO or NESO is a real job. Oh my goodness, Sarah losing not one, not two, but three queens at once. As the creep was not quite connected there through the center of the map. First big victory in this game for Oliveira, guys. 
That was probably the most impactful thing that has happened so far. So an Infestor went down. That's annoying, but a single Infestor is not that big of a deal. But three queens like that in the center of the map. There are some moments where you would really love to use those queens. They have a lot of energy too. Now, Sarah is basically a maxed out Zerg. We've got Ultralisk on the way too, so... It's not like, oh no, we lost the queens, we're in trouble. But obviously that's something that Yona would have rather prevented. Mm -hmm. Scan goes down in the center of the map. There are some bailings in the mix with speed. Oliveira tried to pick them off. Got one of them. There's, of course, a bit of uh, ping involved, guys, for both of these players. This is the way it works. And Sarah was thinking about going up that ramp. But off creep into a choke point with those rocks still up. Uh, some the queen can kill it. Yeah, the queen gets the kill on the Liberator. So a little feel-good moment there for Yona. As the bank is growing, guys. Sarah is maxed out. <coughs> I apologize. Sarah is maxed out and his bank is growing. Thinking about going for it here, there are a decent amount of Hellbats still. EMPs land, a couple of Blinding Clouds go down. I want to say, I don't think Sarah can get too much done here, but... Okay, a couple of Banelings connecting with the Ghosts. The Ghosts do survive, all four of them relatively low in HP. Two of them very, cl very close to dying. I think uh, Olivera is probably not too upset with how that went. That could have gone a lot worse. Sarah, of course, didn't commit quite everything, but... Oh, the Vipers did go down. He's dropping the Hydra then too now. As a Terran, you often feel that three bases is something you can always get going. Base number four can sometimes be a bit of a struggle, but more often than not, you should be fine. But if Oliveira gets his hand on the uh, his hands on the fifth base in the center, it's gonna be uh, potentially a very long game here between these two, and it could get very difficult for Serral to break Oliveira. That's a lot of tanks, man. A lot of tanks, planetaries. We'll come down to the execution of our spellcasters. Vipers are going to be very important here. We've got a game on our hands, guys. A very important one as DKZ is in a 2-0 lead here. Serral gets a Nidus Network too. He's thinking about testing the waters there, but... Oliveira is bulletproof. That really is one hell of a setup. Sends it to our missile turrets. <laughs> Serral is taking their base at 9 o'clock. In range of the sensor tower. Why is Oliveira getting Drilling Claws? That is a bit funny, but maybe this is something that he feels like he needs down the line. What you often see is if the Terrans are very tank heavy, at one point the Zerg will suddenly go back into insane amount of Zerglings, and then having some Widow Mines with Drilling Claws could be nice. Double of Dock gets two tank kills and the Planetary Fortress falls. So decent poke there by Serral. I mean, every single base at this point, guys, on this entire map has been taken. We're not necessarily mining of every base, but right now there is not a single set of mineral patches. That is a cool drop, guys. A little Zerg invasion with an Overlord and 31 Zerglings. This one link was missing out. They almost have all the upgrades. I can only assume that we already have Adreno Glance. I didn't see it finish up, but I'm sure that he has it because it's a Serral. He wants to make sure that he keeps the base safe. Nidus goes up on the left side, but the drop in the main is a bigger moment. Oliveira, how many units do you have in position to take care of these links with plus two and that one ultra? Show us the main observer. There we go. Okay, Sarah's so gonna get a couple of production facilities here. That is kind of about it. Does have a Nidus going up in the main base now as well, but since there is so much army supply nearby, this is not really the moment to uh, full send it. I have to lower my headphone volumes a little bit, guys. I will do that after this game. Now I lowered it for you guys, too, but I don't want to be shouting. I've got a long day. Abdog lands on another tank. Sarah's definitely finding uh, bits and pieces of damage. But we are nowhere near this game ending or Oliveira being uh, down and out. What, we'd what I'd like to see is the Ghost Count a bit more often. I think Ghost Count currently between 5 and 10. Thank you, Cold Razor, for the two months. Marines and Marauders stemming forward. They are going to get that hatch 3. I think that was a bit of an ambitious hatch. Don't know if Saro realistically thought he could start mining of it, but maybe by taking 9 o'clock and top right at the same time, you can actually start mining from one of them. 
We saw a game not too long ago on this map between Cero and Cure, actually in the WTL, where Cero did a great job with these Nidus networks and bouncing the drones all over the place. So then even in bases that are very difficult to defend, Cero will just evacuate the drones, send them elsewhere and do it back and forth. As we have one of the Vipers going down, but it does drop a Parasitic Bomb. We have a proper fight here. Not too much bio support for these Liberators. Couple Ghosts in the back, first nuke on the way, guys. The Liberator was annoying. Saro did not quite evacuate the drone, so he's gonna mine from that base a little more. Or a little longer. Love to see Eunice lost resource tap as well. I have the feeling that Saro lost quite a bit more than Olivera so far, but. Kind of inevitable in this matchup on a map like this with the defensive play that Olivera is going for. We could get a proper fight right now, guys, around this hatchery in the top right side. One tank exposed, the other tank on the low ground gets around it, so that is minus two tanks very quickly on the side of Olivera. As a nuke lens on the three o'clock base. Here is the ghost, we've got an overseer, and Saro finds it immediately. Well done. Armies are fighting with each other in the top right side. Widowmine goes down, couple of tanks. Well, a couple tanks on the high ground, but also ghosts in some dire straits. Sarah's doing a very good job battling around this base in the top right side. He's mining from it. And it's not so much that Sarah really needs that money from the top right side. But what Sarah's doing here is that he's taking resources away that Olivera is supposed to get his hands on down the line. So at this point, we're kind of stealing. We're robbing Olivera. And obviously Olivera knows that he's probably gonna at the bare minimum need one more base if he wants to win this game. Is it impossible on five bases? No, but it's a little bit unlikely. Yeah, Saro's playing smart. He has clearly put some thought into this and it's not easy to execute it. There's a bigger army right now. Eventually Saro's gonna have to sacrifice this base, but that's something that he has peace with. He just wants to steal as many resources as possible. We've got a uh, investor that was burrowed on the bridge, but it got scanned, got picked up immediately. Saro obviously needs to be careful that he doesn't take a horrific fight trying to keep this base alive. Nice barrel bomb in the middle of all these medevacs. The CVs are dying, tank dies. I think Saro's playing incredibly well so far, and I want to say that I believe that he is doing enough for the win. But obviously we're not there yet. It can be very hard to break Terran once they get up to like 150, 160 army supply with a lot of ghosts. But Sarah's doing a good job in just getting pickoffs on units that matter. It's not only a couple of marines here and there that he's killing. It's just kind of tank after tank, some medevacs, some liberators, some ghosts. Sarah now officially forced to evacuate these drones from the top right side with the Nidus. Probably mining immediately from that 9 o'clock base. <laughs> okay, that's a cool tank by Oliveira. I like that tank, guys. That's a cool tank. Saro just made 26 or so banelings. Not totally sure what these banes are going to do. The downside for that tank, by the way, is that Olivera needs to scan over and over again. Or just have like a medevac or a liberator there. Otherwise, he does not have enough range to actually get the amount of shots up that he needs to kill the drones. Ooh, Infester. Hiding in the shadows. It's burrowed. Could obviously unburrow if the army of uh, Saro shows up on the right side. Infestor unburrows, drops the fungal. Could be big. Could be big. That scan has not revealed the Infestor. No Mr. Turret there is another nuke that goes down in the center of the map. Isn't really anything here to protect. Oh, we don't want to lose a Viper to the nuke, but that won't happen. An Infestor is still waiting in the shadows. Another Burrowed Infestor is going to make his way out. Saro is going to try to land a Fungo. Here it comes. Lands a Fungo on the Metavex. Obviously not necessarily the best uh, thing to go for, but it's better than nothing. Uh, Olivera saves all the key units there. Saro takes care of that tank with an dock, so he can continue mining. Gets the second tank as well. I would love them to bring up the units lost recent step a bit more often. A, to see who has lost more, who's killing more, and B, like the specific units that have been killed. Because I feel like in this 19 minute game, Sarah has probably taken out a solid 10 to 15 tanks. I think there's a Widowmine on the right side. No, that's a turret. 
This is a big moment, guys. We remember that infester that's still chilling there. Maybe that missile turret revealed it, but I'm not totally sure if it did. Saro is going to bring it back. Olivero takes out the base at 9 o'clock. Saro is going to use the Nidus once more to evacuate the drones. Oh, the links in the top right side. Oh, that's actually kind of sweet. Over 20 SCVs go down to just the circlings as the SCVs were still trying to long distance mine up the base that had a planetary fortress. So it's a base for a base. A little more bio drop. Almost forgot that that could still be a play. We can pick up a couple of marines and a marauder and drop them in the bottom left side. Yeah, I know sometimes they bring it up in the bottom, uh, Netco, that is correct, but I mean like the specific amount of units, right? I want to see how many Vipers have died, how many tanks have died. Acero is pushing his way through the center, lands an abduct, lands a couple of blinding claws, but... Uh, Olivera is honestly... Uh, okay, this is the one that I was looking for. 21 tanks have died, 5 Vipers, 2 Ultras, 724 Zerglings already. I am uh, I'm not doing the caster thing, guys, when I say that I think this is a very close game. And I think this is going to be a hard one. I like what Saro has been doing, but I really don't know if it's good enough so far. It's, I think Olivera is he's doing a pretty damn solid job. Not falling apart, not making any big errors so far. Obviously playing very defensive. So we don't expect the world champ to just fall apart if he's turtling and he's playing for the ultra late game. Saro has a good bank, but don't be too full, guys. Like 2.5k, 3k, 3k. It may seem like a lot of money, but if you have one really bad fight, as that was a straight up kill, not a cancel on that hatcher in the top right side. Liberator's gonna get abducted. This is a big moment, a very big commitment for Saro. And this definitely looks promising. Liberators have gone down, SCVs are falling. Couple of the tanks getting picked up as well. One more tank will fall. Very successful attack here for Sarah on a very important base for Oliveira. This was a big moment, guys. This attack really needed to get some magic done. And I think it's safe to say that it did. Sarah may have lost that hatchery in the top right side, but... That was probably the biggest victory of the game so far. Thank you, uh, Drenicide, for the 24 months. And a happy birthday. Appreciate it, matey. Sarah would obviously love to do that one more time, guys. The previous setup looked very tough to break. Now he has taken out some of these tanks, uh, and the planetary fortress is delayed. Missile turrets have gone down. There is no reason for Sarah not to try that all over again. <laughs> Fun tank working on the hatchery in the top right side. The Scarlet style, though. I think this is just late game CVP, but. <laughs> nice blinding cloud landing on a couple of the tanks. The Thor is doing a decent job in soaking up some banelings, but obviously not too many banelings, making it through the cracks. Still a scary amount of ghosts in the back line there. Not a bad fight for Cerro once again. As Olivera's SCV count is honestly starting to reach pretty critical numbers. I know he's got a lot of orbitals and stuff, but if we have 128 supply and we have 100 minerals in the bank, I think we want to have a few more than 33 SCVs. This is where I would love to sing the song. That we all live in the yellow submarine. The yellow submarine. The yellow submarine. We all live. So Olivero's income is going to be good, but obviously he needs to grow that army supply. Oh, the neuroparasite on the ghost as the ghost impede some of the other ghosts. Cool play. But there was so much energy that there are still plenty of snipes available, but still a very cool move there. Here comes the Viper once more, lands a blinding cloud on one of the tanks in the front. Not sure if Bailings can connect with the girls, but Bailings will connect with the STVs, will connect with the Planetary Fortress, take out even more workers, and another base for Oliveira. That means Oliveira now drops to double digits. Saro has now probably killed over 40 tanks in this game. And he's not stopping. Two Hellions are going to try to roast and toast a couple of drones in the top right side, but Saro wouldn't be Saro if he didn't leave a few links there as well to protect the workers. It is a death by a thousand paper cuts over here. 
Saro knows that he's probably one fight away from closing this one out. He's just done a tremendous job in making it impossible for Oliveira to ever truly get that six base up and running. First five bases, Saro couldn't do a lot about it. Decided to let it slide. We're like, we're gonna play from here on out. That crucial six base this is not something that Oliveira was ever able to get his hands on. Ah, uh, 33 tanks. 33 tanks have died and 925 Zerglings. You could very well see a game as Oliveira throws down a lot of scans all over the place. Wants to see it this time around. It's not a planetary, guys. It's an orbital. Oliveira knew that he needs to get another base up and running. But if this is not a planetary, it's going to be pretty much impossible to keep it safe. Ghost still being microed in the top right side. There is a safety planetary they can run to. Sero could have killed this orbital, but it doesn't matter. GG gets called. Sero gets a point on the board for Basilisk. And we are still in it, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is Oliver blue? <laughs> if you mean the glasses, uh, there's some sort of a reflection of his monitor. So we are playing things slightly out of order, guys, because Hero was playing in the Korean Weekly. So they asked to do a swap. Sarah was okay with it. Oliver was okay with it. Rainer was okay with it. So Hero could just play his finals. How's he doing, by the way? Is that final still going on? Or did he get bopped? I think he was down out to Hello, Ravi. He lost? That's actually surprising. Damn, 3 0? Surprising. That is surprising. Is Oliveira wearing a Neil jersey or. No, that's the old one. That's just his uh, Kaizi gaming shirt. But what do you, oh, you mean what he's wearing on the webcam? That I didn't pay attention to. I thought you were talking about this one. And poor Yona, dragon skills into Babylon. <laughs> dragon skills into Babylon, guys. That's brutal. As we take a look at the uh, octagon over here, apparently, Oliveira's offense is better than Seros. I mean, he was feeling it right from time to time, and I have got to reach it. Don't know if I would quite go with that. This actually is loser's pick, super biome. The first map is completely random, and then it's loser pick. Why do they put the word win next to the map name without saying which player won? Didn't pay attention to it. I'll take a look at it once this game ends. Uh, someone just joined the chat asking me how the trigger his games go trigger honestly had a pretty sweet start on neo humanity game one against dark everything looked kind of solid for the six uh, uh first six to seven minutes then dark just found some momentum with some zerglings found a bit more damage than it was supposed to trigger made a little mistake with the oracles and in the end a nidus went up in the main base game two was a bit brutal Top left side of Babylon, we are looking at the main base of the reigning, defending, undisputed Stark of 2 champion of the world. That was Oliveira, as he's duking it out with that other world champ, but not from this year. It's last year's world champion, Basilisk Acero. Getting a point on the board for us. DKZ still in the lead to Tawanda. <laughs> Hello, Marine Lloyd. We keep the master of stupidity to play last, that's smart. He's a moderator here, mate. Be careful. <laughs> kind of want to grab myself a drink. That was a long game with a whole lot of talking. We've got a long Monday ahead of us, guys. Glorious day. We obviously have a weekly as well. I might stick around for the second match too between uh, Abydos and... Psy Storm. I think it's a pretty fun one. But I would like to take a tiny break between all of this and the weekly. But we'll figure that out later. Obviously need to find some food. Because I do plan on drinking some champagne later tonight. Now, I'm not sure if I can live off cheesecake. But I'm going to try. Thank you done mate for the prime. Obviously guys all these clan wars are a best of 7. In case you're unfamiliar with the format. First team that gets 4 map wins. Wins the uh, best of 7. If it's 3-3 after 6, we will go to an ace match. Hmm. 
Uh, game 2 between Trigger and Dark. It was just one of these moments where one thing that may not seem that big of a deal goes wrong. But because of that everything went wrong. Two Stalkers got surrounded out of range of the battery at the third base of Trigger. To keep these Stalkers alive, he used a recall. But by using the recall, he lost two Stalkers. He still lost the initial two Stalkers that were in trouble. And he was forced to use an overcharge. So basically, something that could have done nothing, like Stalkers in a choke point against the Lynx, totally fine, now turn into four victories for Dark. Overcharge, recall, two Stalkers defensively, two Stalkers offensively. And yeah... Dark is obviously pretty good at the video game. So if you give that man four little victories in the time span of 10 seconds, he's gonna make life very hard on you. We can start tomorrow, Pi. Today is a special day, mate. Today we can celebrate and live our best life. Tomorrow we can start worrying about the kilograms, but not today. I did find my captain thing, by the way. He was hiding up there. Since I put it on, we are undefeated. Sarah taking the third base at the 3 o'clock position. I want to say... Kind of standard. I feel like sometimes these Zerg players take it at the triangle as well. But obviously the rocks are a problem on this map. But I don't mind this. I think it makes sense. Don't mind it, but... Maybe a bit different. wonder if Sarah is going to take the fourth base in the top right side or if he then tries to take the triangle. I think if we're taking this as our third, it kind of makes sense to take our fourth base in the top right side. But keep an eye on it. Last game, we had Hellions into a Liberator, but very passive play from Oliveira. As he was obviously not throwing away any units. Kind of wanted to keep his Hellions alive to morph them into Hellbats to make sure that he could go up to five bases. This time around, we have Hellions and a Banshee. A very common standard opening, but one that should net for a little more action. And hopefully for Oliveira a bit more damage. I'm a little biased in the matter, and I hope we don't see too much damage. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you, Rotterdam08. I appreciate it, mate. Sorry, my alerts are disabled in the game. Uh, especially on a day like today, I don't want you guys to uh, have to listen to all the random sounds over and over again. During the weekly, I'm gonna just let it run, obviously, but for WTL here, especially in this big game, I kinda wanna have to focus on the games. But I appreciate the love, guys. Reapers and a Hellion roaming the center of the map. Queen's getting bounced around the double Evo. Double Evolution Chamber, guys, for Iona. Probably gonna go for plus one melee, plus one carapace. Last game around, Saru opened up with the Roaches, even went for plus one missile attacks. So he's switching it up. I'm not totally sure why that is. Maybe it's just something that he enjoys more on Babylon. Obviously, it's a big match, guys. Because if Oliveira wins, then Hero only needs one map against Raynor to close out the best of seven for them. If Cyril defeats Oliveira 2-0, then our final best of two really is one for all the marbles. And all three scores, obviously, are completely possible there. I look forward to that prediction. I really wonder what you guys will predict. This map is some Terran BS. I mean, this is a tough best of two for Sarah. Dragon skills into Babylon. <laughs> Enjoy, Yona. The two Banshees guys are cruising and they're making their way to the top right side. Banshees and Hellions together can absolutely get a cancel on this hatchery. Sarah's obviously going to do his best not to let that happen. The Queens are battling the, uh, the Hellions. Sarah cannot lose a Queen. A little bit dicey, guys. Banshee's pushing out a lot of damage. Sportcrawler making its way over. Good movement on the Banshees by Oliveira. And it's starting to look more and more that Oliveira will get the cancel. An absolute last, last minute cancel there for Sarah. But still not happy. Did clean up all the Hellions. Uh, I don't think he lost too many Zerklings. Got the majority of the Hellions. But was forced to cancel that base in the top right side. Love to see Sarah take double expand at this point. Yeah, and he is doing that. He's taking the triangle now as well. We've got a macro hatch going up in the main base. We are rebuilding the base in the top right side and we are taking the triangle. <laughs> Ten years and one day earlier than me, Frate. Hello, Dodger Gamer. 
Thank you, mate. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Mithuma getting picked off in the center of the map. Nice little surround, though, by Saro. Oliveira was a little late with the pickup. No biggie. We got the armory coming up. Another factory as well. And the fourth CC is going up on the low ground. So Oliveira is going to try to just uh, get all of that going as quickly as possible. Once more, very macro oriented focused here by our Chinese Terran. Slightly more commitment with the Hellions and the Banshees on getting a cancel on a hatchery and slowing it down. But if there is no real scary follow up, then I kind of don't mind the start for Saro. It's another surround. It's just all over these Marines. Every single time these Marines hop out of the Manavex, Saro is there with his links. Olivero throws down a scan, finds a few more. Crypto Morris is going to be forced to pick up again, though. He's going to send them home. I kind of think that the Marine count is this low. That he may as well send it home. Big moment here as Olivero tries to go up to four bases. Cerro is sending a lot of links. Gets on top of the Marines again in the center of the map. Observer is not showing us. Olivero was tilting his head. Yeah, he lost all these Marines, guys. The Observer missed it. But Olivero unloaded all 12 Marines in the center. Cerro jumped on it. Killed all of them. Olivero saw it too late. Tilted his head backwards. Was not happy. I will not mold over the Chinese Observer today, guys. It's my favorite day of the year. Happy vibes 24-7, but... I still think that... Uh, I've seen better Observer. I'm not gonna say he's bad, but I've seen better. Olivero forced to pick up all these units not really getting a whole lot done. Planetary Fortress is finishing up though, so that's obviously nice. He's got his four base set up. We are heading into Liberators. We're heading into Widow Mines. And obviously there is a lot of bio. Cero needs to be very careful. If Cero takes one bad fight, this game could be over. And Babylon is very scary. Cero setting up the surround. Plus two melee is done. Plus two carapace is done. But a lot of the tanks have already sieged up as well. Look at the minimap, guys. Keep an eye on the minimap. Cero splitting off a lot of units towards the left. Goes for a run by, wants to go for the natural, the depot's duel got raised. So he goes for the third base instead, no big Gabriel Bonke there. And that means that these SUVs are in a bit of a pickle. Gets the sands at the R, hell yeah! Exclamation mark perfect in the chat, please. Few links still left behind, guys, and a lot of these SUVs are very low in HP. Ah, that went well for Cero. Because obviously Hive Tech is done. Cero finds all these Marines. No Medivax to save them. Olivero is not going to be happy with that. Oh, the door's still open. Bane is going to connect maybe with the SCVs. There are some Widow Mines in the mix. Widow Mine number... Oh my goodness. Mine fresh. What a Widow Mine explosion. But Cero still got the majority of the SCVs there. Olivero is attacking the triangle base from Cero at this point. I mean, the third base is wide open. Cero still needs to be careful. He's investing a lot in Adreno Glance, plus three melee, plus three carapace, and Orbital is an Orbital gonna die to Lynx? Oh my goodness, Cero gets the kill on the Orbital. Cero's Lynx are built different, baby, apparently event here. At the same time, Olivera did get a base on the other side of the map, but Cero is just not giving Olivera the fight that he was hoping for. Clearly, Olivera's focus was mostly on the offense and not on the defense, as the Lynx break through the natural too now. Uh, Olivera is tilted. He's like, damn it. He's just paying full focus to everything that's happening in the center of the map. He was waiting for that big fight. He wanted to make sure the tank target fire was good. The spacing was good. The micro on the Marines was good. Saros is not engaging him. Saros is attacking everything besides where Olivera wants him to attack. And at this point, I think Saros has bought so much time for himself. He has a remax. He's killing another Orbitor. If, uh, okay. Oh my god, Lynx are in the main base as well. Here we go, guys. All that Saros needs to do is get one good cleanup. And with blinding clouds like that, Widow Mine connections not quite making the difference. We are looking at a convincing strong tool for the great Yona Sotala. And we are back even, baby. DKZ took a 2 0 lead over us. But after the second best of two, we're all tied up. And it means it will now all come down to this hero versus Rainer. Bombardiers to your station. Mayday! Mayday! We are losing altitude! She's going to blow! Thank you so much. I promise you guys that is not me donating to myself. There is a sweet man or a woman out there 
It just writes Rotterdam 08 and keeps on sending me 30 bucks, which is very nice. I assume it's for the birthday, so I'll say thank you. Even if it's not, I'll say thank you. 0 2 0, guys. We're all tied up. Entering our third best of two. Uh, Rainer versus Hero best of two. Honestly, uh, I, I see all three scores here as a possibility, right? Rose donating to himself. I'm not, I promise. Someone truly thinks that that's the case. I could show PayPal, but obviously I'm not truly. I could show the initials. But I think you guys are well aware that that's not happening. Thank you, Matok Matok, for the 15 months. Much love, matey. I, uh, I wonder what you guys are voting for here, guys. Rainer vs. Hero, best of two. Map 1 is going to be played on uh, Ancient. Ancient is our starting map. And after that, it's loser pick. So if Hero loses, he can pick, obviously. And if Rainer loses, he can pick the second map. Thank you, Josarian, as well, for continuing the gifted subby. What the heck is the best of two? Well, it's the best of two, mate. It means we're playing two games. There is a starting map, and then there is a loser pick map. So the final score will either be 2-0 or 1-1. Or 0-2. But that's a 2-0 as well. Since we're all tied up between these guys. I can show you guys my monitor again. Thank you, Lemogli. Thank you, Tapasco. Thank you, Yosarian. Obviously, guys, with a 2-0 for either party, the clan war is over. And we either have an amazing result for Basilisk or a somewhat disappointing one. But that's all good. It's regular season. If it's 1-1, we're still tied. And then we go to an ace match. Thank you, XY Asha TV. Appreciate it for the prime. One final best of two, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a drink. What shall I get? It is 3 p.m. What does Roddy get on his special cake day at 3 p.m.? A mojito. <laughs> Vicky has done a lot of great things for me already today, but I, I don't think she's quite prepared to make me mojitos. Let's get some water ready. I actually don't hate the water idea. I think I'll go for some water. Hello, Multi. Thank you, mate. I think uh, I'm gonna go with the water idea. I'll give you your VIP, mate. And if you uh, use some channel points, it'll be a VIP. Give you a VIP. I don't know if I still have those. Enjoy my third, <laughs> 33, 43. Sure. Rain, hey, he got he got popped. They they gave Rainer a raise, guys. Rainer used to be an 82. Wow, they're so brutal on Hero. What the hell? Hero dropped to 79. Rainer is no longer an 82. Rainer is an 83. <laughs> 79 is uh quite rough. <laughs> <laughs> 79 for the man that a lot of people look at as the best Protoss player on this planet. In my eyes, he's the second best Protoss on this planet, but a lot of people think he is the best. <laughs> 79. That can only mean one thing, guys, and that is that Protoss is just hot garbage. Who's the best us? In my eyes, it's Max Max Maxbox, but it's obviously close. Hero is very good. All right, let me go get my drink, guys. I'll be right back. Beautiful octagon over here, guys. We can see some green in the octagon, a lot of gray, and a little bit of purple. Uh, I guess green is Rainer. Purple is... No. Purple is Rainer. Green is Hero. I think left is always green. I like how, Ra how Hero has a lower overall score, but then he is picking more in the octagon than Rainer is. That makes no sense. They tied, there was an ace match. Yes, that is correct. 
2-0 for Hero and Basilisk is going to drop to 2-1 and one in the regular season and we will officially have our first loss. 2-0 for Rainer and we will stay undefeated together with uh, Onside Gaming as the only undefeated teams in the league. 1-1 one, one, and it will go to an all deciding ace match. Ace match would be Rainer Dark. I, I don't want to say that it's time for the big man to come out but if there was ever a moment for Ruddy to be the ace. Isn't it on uh, my special day, guys? Can you guys really imagine me losing on the 8th of May? Uh -uh. All right, bottom left side, representing Dragon Kaizy Gaming. It is Hero. Top right side, we are looking at the main base of our Italian Stallion. Back in the Netherlands, playing from his ideal perfect setup. It is Raynor for Basilisk. <laughs> Raynor wrote earlier in the chat, I need a haircut. Now looking at this camera, I'm gonna agree. <laughs> Rainer does need a haircut. <laughs> Rainer does need a haircut, guys. It's growing out of control. <laughs> so far, uh, there's been some banter between some of the European pro gamers calling Rainer a 50% player. Because Rainer has gone one and one quite often in the WTL. And so far for Basilisk, I think he went 1-1 one one twice, right? He went 1-1 one one with Nightmare and... What was our other match? 1-1 one one Nightmare and 1-1 one one Creator? Did he play Creator? Is that what it was? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, so Lambo calls Rainer the 50% player. <laughs> uh. Mouse yeah, sorry, I'll fix it. I think Rainer has pretty hot ZVP at the moment. I expect it to be pretty Ling focused in this best of two. Don't really think he's gonna go Roaches quickly. He obviously knows that Hero is a massive fan of the Blinky boys and there is a very good chance we're gonna just see Oracles into Blink Stalkers. Maybe Hero is gonna throw a curveball and he will play some Resonating Glaive Adapts. I'd be a tiny bit surprised though. I expect Hero to open up with Oracles here. Oh, yeah, he went 1-1 one, one with Max Packs, yeah. Not Yeah, because we played Sidestorm. So 1-1 one, one Nightmare and 1-1 one, one Max Packs. Is the record so far for Reina. Hero goes one gate fast expand into the Twilight Council immediately, guys. So no Oracles this time around. Twilight opening here for Hero. It's very important for Reina to pick up on this. And after that. It's a bit of the guessing game, right? Is it uh, three gate, four gate, four gate robo, four gate robo with a dark swing follow up? Is it just four gateways with an expand or three gates with an expand? Is it maybe two bays into all the gases, into the robo bay and the speed prism and the disruptor follow up? Hero can play this out in many different ways. What we do know is that the first upgrade is indeed going to be resonating claves. Rainer will know that as well as soon as he sees the lack of a stargate. And after that, the world is your oyster. All of it is possible. Uh, yeah, item. I think it's gonna stick because of uh, ESL Masters. It would make no sense if they like move it to the Monday morning for like three weeks and then suddenly go back to a different slot again. But yeah, I didn't know it was this morning. Uh, I wouldn't have casted it anyway today because obviously I want to do WTL. I want to do the European weekly in the evening, but. You know, maybe in the future, if there is no WTL on the Monday, I might hop into the Korean Weekly a couple times. Could be fun. Fun little way to start the day. Raynor is not going to go something very ambitious, and that is uh, Ling Bane. He's going to go with the Road Warn. This is not quite the right amount of links to surround these adapts. There's already the Robo Bay, by the way, guys. That is such a quick Robo Bay, no? Even if we are opening up with a bunch of adapts and resonating glaives. Super early Robo Bay for Hero here. Gonna keep a close eye on the work account. So far it's 40 probes on the side of Hero, 38 on the side of Raynor. He's already making some links and roaches. Could morph a couple of the roaches into Ravages. But if you're making this many roaches, I don't think that's the play. Oh, Raynor catches these adapts right before Glaze is done, guys. Big start here for Raynor. Now that's some sexy circling movement. Does not get the third one. But getting two adapts that early is big. Man, the timing, right? Like five, six seconds before Resonant Enclave is done. 
Let's go, Raynor. There's not a Link show up, but a pretty picture for a moment on the other side of the map. Can he get a cancel on the Nexus? I kind of think we can. It's very close. It's very close, but I think we can. Come on, Mighty Circling. Oh, are you kidding? Okay, that's unfortunate. If he wouldn't have gone for that Adept in the choke point, the first the second of all of that, he would have had it. It's a very interesting way, the way that Hero's playing this though, guys. Because we haven't even really had an Adept opening. Oh, War Prism could be in a bit of a pickle here. That's a lot of Queens. Prism does not take any real damage. Wow, Recall. I guess he just wanted to get that Prism home as quickly as possible to unload the Adepts and bring in the Disruptors, but... I find it a bit of a strange recall, to be completely honest. Like, how many seconds did we really buy there with that recall? Yeah, of course he put the disruptors in the prism, that's what I said, but... I feel like we barely bought any time there, but it is what it is, we'll see. I feel so far so good for Raynor, but... Obviously, one ball is sometimes all it takes in this matchup. These adapts are threatening, but they will not commit. For Raynor, it's just key not to lose too many roaches to the Novas. When is that first Nova gonna go down? That's kind of the big question. Hero is waiting with it. We'll cancel the Adept Shade. Here we go. Now he's gonna send a Nova. Raynor! Oh, that's a lot of roaches to lose against our first Nova. We're gonna have to settle for minus two roaches on the second one. The first one was big, though. It's very hard to protect your roaches if you don't have roach speed. Even on creep. Okay, looking scary now. The queens are here. They can buy some time. Transfuse is going to go down. Nova will settle for only a single queen in the end. So Reyna doing good there. Depshade finishes up into the main base. Reyna does not have any units in position. Some drones are going to fall here. That is inevitable. Just the question is how many. Minus eight rather quickly. Minus nine. As they now shade back on top of all the roaches. And Nova is available. Nova goes forward. Only gets a single roach. There... Only uh, damage on a queen, not even the kill. I think Rain has done good against the disruptors, but is obviously in pretty dire straits when it comes to the economy. Does have a big old army though, guys. Army supply looking fantastic. All right, drone count not so much. Only the first Nova was very big so far. Early pull there by Rainer. He's not gonna let these Novas get a whole lot. Single drone against two disruptors. Reyna has a lot of units on the other side of the map. And uh, Hero is going to use the Coco uh, recall apparently. That's the thing as well. Second recall has been used in an 8 minute game. Must be nice to be a Protoss player. What a race, guys. What that does by Hero, excuse me, uh, Reyna, is obviously time, right? To redrone, resaturate our bases. And that's obviously what he needs because he's still down in workers. It's an eight minute game. Raynor is down. A couple workers at this point. He's going up to four bases though. Dropping a bailing net. This is a, a close one. And like these adapts are going to fall off a little bit, right? Adapts are good if the armies are small, but they really start falling off. Especially if Raynor gets a couple bailings with bailing speed. Or the ravage count increases. Uh, the army supply advantage was very big at one point where it was like 70 against 28 but it's still not quite enough to really just send it to the other side of the map because the arena then gets cleaned up and he's 15 workers behind and he's straight up dead Bailing speed on the way plus one melee more than 50 percent done Rainer setting up a little counter i wonder if there is a unit in the wall off by the way maybe Rainer can get into the natural those are roaches not zerglings they're just gonna walk on in there. No recall available, by the way, guys, because we just used recall. And I know Coco's uh, recall is a thing, but there's no way that it's already ready. No, Rain is shooting at the unbuildable plates there. I mean, I know it's only a single volley, but still kind of sad. We'll get a couple of probes. We'll get a couple of stalkers. And above all, buy a lot of time for himself. It also opens up the map a little. Rain's army is gonna run into the third or fourth base. Hero is even going up to five bases already, which is quite wild. Oh, there's just cannons everywhere. Very good crisis management. Very good defense here by uh, Hero as he just did not lose a whole lot there. Reyna needs to be careful. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire as a forward blink goes down as well. Corrosive balls. So we have a bit of a link counter. Ten workers have fallen in total. It's not a lot. Hero still sitting pretty on 79. 
five base protos rain are definitely in some trouble here guys all of that had potential but Rainer just didn't get too much done almost gets a free disruptor there that would have been a lovely start this is a scary protos army man Corosa Bow is going to soften up some of the stalkers. The Observer dies. That's very nice. Killing the Observer is very nice. Rainer in trouble. I am on some Copium here. As we have the Bailings rolling forward. Can they blow up something that matters? Well, the stalkers have all blinked. Rainer needs to be careful. It's so hard to get on top of this army. I want to say that wasn't bad. But obviously, if the stalkers will just regenerate all their shields. Can Rainer get a free Disruptor? Okay, that's good. Rainer definitely making the most of a very dire situation with just so little creep. So little creep to work with. Hero F5 base monstrous protos. It's looking rough. Plus two melee would definitely turn me into a dreamer. Rainer has some minerals in the bank, but I think he's larva starved. Like this is still the kind of army though, guys, that if Rainer gets a sexy surround, gets a lot of surface area with links, it is possible. Zealots can clump up. They can all die against Veilings. Does it look very, very difficult? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Am I on a bit of that copium because I am cheering for Basilisk and Rainer? Yeah, sure. But this is not impossible. It's looking very difficult, but it's not impossible. Ah! Okay, that didn't actually go all that bad. More Veilings connecting. Go for it. Just blow up. Now we can maybe just go. I feel like that was a great start of the fight for Rainer. And I don't know if there is another Coco Recall available or not. Apparently there is. But Rainer still gets all but two of the Disruptors. Gets these Stalkers then as well. And Rainer taking some tremendous trades here, guys. Does it mean that Rainer now has the game in the back? No, absolutely. But it just means that the game will go on. And Rainer is allowed to dream. What's on the top left side, guys? What is that? Zealots? What is in the top left? Observer, show me. Zealots. A whole lot of them. Can't recall. Both armies right now making their way to the top right, uh, left side. Hero needs to be careful with his stalkers though. Like Zealots obviously are units that you can easily replace. Stalkers a bit more difficult. Also, I don't think he has too many gases. There's, uh, more disruptors getting caught. Lynx getting on top of this little Protoss army. Reyna has now killed like 6 or 7 disruptors. Prism does make it into the main base. And that's a good old Protoss warp in. A plus 2 zealots and plus 1 armor as well. Oh, Reyna. A couple links are not going to be good enough here, mate. This hero is active with his army in the center of the map as well. It's looking so difficult. Can Reyna send enough units into his main base as he loses the macro hatch? We do have Bailings. Bailing is getting very good connections. Okay. That will allow us to at least clean up. Gets the Warp Prism too. A bit sloppy by Hero to make that, to let that happen. I mean, very good cleanup in the end by Rainer. Can we get even more? I mean, Hero is becoming a 6 base Protoss, man. What the hell? What is this? Walmart? Like, two next time for the price of one? Where is he finding all this money? Oh, he's on 93 probes. <laughs> I guess that's where he's finding the, that money. Uh, no, I don't think Rainer knows about... Uh, the fifth or the sixth even. So Reyna has taken one miraculous fight with this Lair Attack army. Obviously with this many workers, like Hero's max out army is never going to be all that big. He does have a Dark Shrine finishing up now as well. Reyna needs a, a very good engagement against the Disruptors. Can we redo what we did earlier in this game? Nah, these Novas were a whole lot better. A lot of Veilings were exploded in the top left side. One more big Nova goes off in the Roaches and the Ravages. And our Italian Stallion is in serious trouble here in game one, guys. Reyna has battled. He honestly made some magic happen with very few units a couple of times. Got good engagements, but... Hero's economy was just too powerful in this game. Uh, Reyna had a big roach run by that wasn't quite worth it. And during that, Hero was going up to five bases. The Lynx couldn't get a lot done. As Hero is now even trying to take the base at four o'clock. But I'm going to be honest, guys. That's disrespectful. GG gets called. Rainer is going to take a look at the map. And he will see the amount of bases that Hero got his hands on. Big performance by Hero. You got to give him kudos. Gave himself a little fist pump there. Uh, very strong game by Hero. For the second time in this best of seven. Basilisk is trailing. Rainer needs to win the next game. If he wins it, we're sending it to an ace match. If Hero wins the next game, it is all over.
for the regular season, of course, guys. It's just regular season, a big round robin. Come on, Rainer, live up to that 50% high, baby. You're our 50% dude. <laughs> I mean, fifty percent. I think is never bad. If you believe in your ace, then as long as you get a fifty percent win record in the WTL, you're doing good. But obviously, we know that Rainer is better. He's capable of getting a whole bunch of two L's on the board. Uh, but yeah, he's getting a lot of very difficult Protoss players so far. Play day one gets nightmare. Play day two gets max packs. Play day three gets heroes. Like, all right. <laughs> Y'all got any more of them Protoss players, mate? <laughs> what map next? Well, that came uh, down to what Raynor wanted to play on. Raynor has picked a Neo Humanity. Hmm. Hello, hello, Jumi. Thank you, Jumi, for the wishes. I hope it's gonna be a great day, mate. So far, I'm having a pretty lovely Monday. Got to see my mom for a split second. Got some presents. Got some decorations. I have cheesecake to look forward to. Champagne to look forward to. But my birthday would definitely be a whole lot better with Rainer winning this game on Neo Humanity. I think he picks Neo Humanity because he loves the rich Vespian geyser. I don't think it's so much for Swarmos. I think it's a lot more for crazy amounts of roaches, ravagers, queens. Like. German taxi, German Uber, something among those lines. Thank you, CamJ26, for the prime. Oof. I'll show it quickly. On this scene, we have no alerts. On the out of game scene, we do have alerts. Thank you, Logic. Hmm. Why Neo? I love Neo as a toss player. Raynor loves, as I said, the rich Vespian geyser. And honestly, like, Heroes is pretty intimidating on all the maps, right? <laughs> Neo is so shit for Zerg if you either Swarmos or your TM build. Well, I don't think it's shit for Zergs. I think you're going way too far there. Top left side, guys, of Neo Humanity. It's match point for Dragon Kaiser Gaming. It's match point for him. It is Hero. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of our Italian Stallion. Can I get some love and hype in the chat for Basilisk Reynor? I am the official home caster, guys. I am not a neutral caster in the WTL. I'm biased. I'm the captain. I'm dressed as well. We'll put on a different shirt later tonight to give it some birthday vibes. But obviously, while we're watching Basilisk, we are rocking the Basilisk jersey. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Benny. You're always sweet, mate. If everyone was as sweet as you, Benny, the world would be not round, but a sugar cube. Too much sweetness. And basically be a flat earth. <laughs> Thank you, F North. Appreciate it, guys. Come on, Rainer, let's go. Rainer is back in the Netherlands once more. Obviously, whenever this is the setup that he's playing from, this is the living room in his apartment that he's sharing together with Skillis. I had the opportunity to visit it a couple weeks ago, right before Rainer went to Italy. We watched uh, Roma against Feyenoord there. Now, neither Rainer or Skillis is particularly passionate about football, but it was still cool. They invited me and we watched the game together. And Rainer did his best. Got a whole bunch of snacks, got some pizzas. Some finger food. He was trying to be an adult and a great host. It was very sweet to see. Mm. No, it was not big Gabriel pizzas. There can only be one Gabe and uh, pizzas. Thank you, Joey VSE2 as well. Or oh, that's just a copy pasta, actually. Taking advantage of Roddy as an old man on my birthday. That's shameless, guys. Typically looks livelier in most of his streams. Well, in most of his streams, he's chilling. Right now, he's not chilling. He's going up against either the best or the second best Protoss in the world. And it's match point for the other team. So it'd be very weird if Reyna was just having the time of his life right now. 
looking around and talking. Of course, he's focused. He wants to make all of us proud. Rich Vespian, guys, are as a third base. It is, guys. You guys were wondering why Rainer picks Neo Humanity. This is why he picks Neo Humanity. Hero drops the Stargate. I do hope, though, that I want to say that Reyna goes up to a lair quickly, but I don't know. Void Ray first, guys. I don't hate seeing this. Reyna gets an easy scout with the Zorkling. Now we can actually evacuate our Overlord to the top right side, and we may be able to save one Ovi that we normally always lose. Thank you, Prof Nuggy. Yona. <laughs> Welcome, Yona. Hello, Spots. Thanks, guys. I don't hate uh, the Void Ray, guys, to go up against that is. If I was cheering for Hero, I'd be kind of concerned right now. Wait, is that a second Void? Wow, we're going old school. This basically brings us back a couple patches where it could very well be double Stargate here. Double Stargate and a whole lot of Void Rays and then batteries and cannons or something? Because you don't casually open up with two Void Rays and then you transition. I mean, for Raynor, I think if we want to Queen Walk or German Uber, German Taxi, German Lyft, German Deutsche Bahn, whatever we want to do with our queens. It is important that we pick up on the fact that there is a second Void Ray out on the map. A third Void Ray now too, yeah. But you have to play double Stargate now though, no? Like single Stargate Void Ray just seems terrible. Okay, it's single Stargate Void Ray into a Robo. I feel like there is a lot of potential for Rainer to get the job done here. We do get Lair, we can get Overlord speed, we can obviously, we need to start spreading our crypto moves forward by the way. That's the one thing that I was talking about, that I think is very important. Technically right now there is nothing that's slowing Rainer's creep down. Rainer can just go for as many ambitious tumors as he would like to. Look at that Void Ray by the way, it's haunting the Overlord in the top right side. <laughs> Reina probably thought that, that Overlord was safe, but there was an Overlord here. It was blocked by my ugly face because my camera was in the top right side. Well, that Overlord did finally go down to that Void. A robo and a Forge. I think the Forge is mold. Ooh, one Adept here could be a big deal. This could force Hero to reveal the fact that he has built a few more Void Rays. He's not doing it. Hero's just like, I don't give a damn about that Adept. I don't hate it, man. I really like this for Rainer. Economically, it looks good. I think Void Rays suck. Immortals, if there is no proper support and backup for them, suck. We can just spam Ravages and Queens here. Now plus one arrow. Aspire, okay. Huh. Tiny bit surprised about Aspire. Don't hate it. I mean, Rainer is just not going to be as aggressive as we maybe thought he was going to be. Ooh, four Void Rays. Very important that we don't lose a lair here or something. Ay, 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 ay. Lair is going to be a priority. Smoke crawl a bit out of position. But the queens are here. Reyna's setting up the trap. He's like, yeah, go for that lair. I dare you. Transfuse though, Reyna. Now we need to transfuse. First Void Ray dies. Now we transfuse again. Reyna with the big rain bait. Or is he going to lose the lair? Reyna loses the lair in the end. Does get three out of four Void Rays though, so... I don't think it's uh, bad for Rainer. Like, sure, it sucks that he lost the lair, but he already dropped his Spire anyway. It's three Void Rays for a lair. I don't hate it. If I was Hero, I would not like that. Should have moved the Spore. Yes, Mixu. I was waiting for Rainer to move the Spore, but I think Rainer felt that he was going to be able to keep the lair alive by setting up the trap and the bait. And if he would move the spore, the hero would very quickly realize he wasn't going to get it. And Reyna wanted to kill as many voids as possible. Now Mudas. Okay. Uh, Mudas of 62 drones. Reynard. I mean, obviously Mudas are great if it would be double robo as a follow-up. I don't know. I think we can build crazy amounts of Mudas. So that part I like, man. This is it's hard to call. It's a weird game. Rich Vespian guys should be very important. Hero does not have too much scouting. I don't know if there's an observer in any of these bases, but... Reyna did not go early lurk it then. I don't think there is even a lurk it then. There are no Hydras. I don't know which game you're watching, mate, but... <laughs> I didn't... I didn't see a Hydra then. Maybe he's got one, but he's not using it anyway. Alright. 
Venus Muta is gonna fly into the natural, guys. Hero does not have a whole lot of mobile anti air. Mutas have completely caught him off guard. Like, carriers are very good against Muta. So, what does Rainer wants to do? Rainer kind of just wants to make one set of Mutas by the looks of it. And stop nine probes. Rainer's shaking his head a lot. It's really not looking that bad, mate. It may not be looking fantastic, but it's not looking that bad. You've got an economy. You've got four bases. You're going up to five. Rainer looks very unhappy for a game where I feel like he doesn't have to look that unhappy. That kind of scared me a little. You like it for Hero? I like it for Rainer. Obviously our Hive is a little bit late, but... It's only plus one as well. Like if Hero had plus two and triple Stargate, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm worried. He is going to get triple Stargate now. I like it for rain. As long as we just fire up a hive and we get a couple of uh, vipers. There's really no need to panic over this game. Panic. I am panicking a little because it's definitely the first time that any team has a match point against us. Tiny Link run by. Obviously there are some cannons and batteries, but Link's still nice. Can Rainer find some probes here? Oh yes he can, baby. Two workers going down rather quickly. A lot of lost mining time. There's still a couple links in the main base as well. Excellent little run by, guys. Rainer's trying his luck in the center of the map as well. But he ran back. Just taking a little look what he was going up against. Only now, plus two air weapons is starting. Nine minutes and 30 seconds. And only now, plus two air weapons is starting. I would like to see Rainer get either plus two flyer attacks or carapace, by the way. Mudas, I'm gonna find the Rainer, excuse me, hero out of position one more time. Rainer finding additional worker damage. Oh, Corruptors are gonna go for it, guys. Hoping that they can get a good fight against Carrius, but there is a battery overcharge there. That's difficult. Can one shot a Phoenix? Good overcharge there by Hero. Gotta give him kudos for that one. It's not an easy to play, Protoss, guys. Rainer goes Great Aspire before I. I mean, it's good against the Grunt. I don't really like that, to be completely honest. I really would have preferred a plus two flyer attacks or a plus one carapace. Let's get some uh, Vipers still, Rainer. Like, come on, mate. I feel like Vipers are the absolute MVP key unit here. In a game where the Twilight Council isn't even done. Like, if we get Vipers, as we have a couple of bailing run bys in the center. Not getting too much. Good job there by Hero. Rainer, mate. Why are we not building Vipers right now? What is this? What are you trying to do? Win the game on hard mode? Hero has nothing that's good against Vipers. And now he's getting the Templar Archives. Look. Rainer is uh, kind of just going for like the ultra late game almost by the looks of it. Getting a second spy now. Getting seven spores and a couple of infestors. As these three mutas are going to fly around one more time. It's an interesting game here, guys. Rainer wants to slowly but steady probably get rid of a couple of the roaches. He has a lot of supply still in roaches. Well, when I say a lot, he's got a decent amount of supply in roaches. Rainer needs to keep in mind, by the way, that he's going to mine out that rich Vespian guys rather quickly. He's already done it, actually. Like, it's a great gas to have. But now we have Vipers on the way. Like, that rich Vespian geyser is great, but it does run out rather quickly. It seems that our plan is to just uh, get a whole bunch of Spore Crawlers. Let the Spore Crawlers do their thing against the Interceptors. This is a scary moment, guys, as Hero is going to go for it with a max out Protoss army plus two air weapons. Not all the Spores are done yet. Can we land a nice Fungal Rainer? Yeah, decent little Fungal. Uh, Void Ray lives. Phoenix went down. A Disruptor died immediately. We need these extra Spores. Here we go. This is Okay, another Fungal does land. The Ground Army definitely in some trouble. Rainer counterattacking. Don't we have enough anti air though? I am just worried that we do not have enough anti air. Corruptors are floating around. The infestors are gonna try to do that thing. Big ass fungal on the entire army. Where are the parasitic bombs? I would love a parasitic bomb right now. Ooh, carriers are so freaking good. Rainer has a lot of minerals in the bank, not too much gas. But Hero might be too scared to keep on pushing. Vipers uh, didn't die there. They didn't even really participate in the fight. Oh, Heroes Remax is going to be on Archons and Void Race. Do we still... He has Flux Veins. Yeah, he has Flux Veins. He got it in the beginning of the game. 
All right. A lot of zealots right now just running in there. We can now use our brute lords. We still have brute lords, no? Ooh, no boss, scary. It's okay. The game will go on. We had a couple of brute lords left. The ground army could obviously become terrifying if a hero managed to kill it. Could land a few fungus once more. Where are those vipers, Rainer? The spore crawl account is higher than it was before. At least that's what it feels like to me. Intercept account is dwindling. Both players close to maxing out. Rainer getting four extra brute lords. Realizes that the threat of the ground army is very real here. Parasitic bomb goes down on the void. Deals a lot of damage on the other voids, and the other void race forced to disengage. One carrier died to spore crawl as an abduct finally goes off. And that's the second carrier. I'm starting to love it for Reina, guys. Reina displaying some beautiful late game decision micro. And making, rather. As he gets another abduct, gets another carrier. It almost felt that Hero was hoping that Reina would go all out on the anti air there. And that he could surprise him with Zealot Archon, Void Ray. But now killing these Brute Lords is gonna be difficult. Hero's army is not exactly what sweet dreams are made of. Now the brutes are a little bit exposed there, Rainer. We don't want to lose our brute lord as an abduct does go off and the carrier carrier dies. Brute lords are in a pretty sweet spot. Parasitic bomb lands in the middle of the void race. I mean, okay, Hero has split off all of his zealots into the natural. That is scary. Rainer does not want to end up losing like 30, 40 drones in two bases. What about some banelings, Rainer? I would kind of like some banelings. A lot of chaos. These zealots do all get surrounded and they will get picked off. Ooh, prismatic alignment there. These voids getting some very good shots off on the Brute Lords. Rainer kind of scrambling a little bit right now. Prismatic is good, but the Corruptors are doing their thing. Every single Void Ray has died. And there are still some Brute Lords in the sky. Rainer immediately is going to morph some more Brute Lords. The audio of this stream is all over the place, by the way. It's not my fault, guys. Sometimes it's very loud, sometimes it's very quiet. And I cannot adjust my headphone volume. Rainer lost drones, Rainer lost their base, but Rainer still has a good old powerful army. And at this point, Hero does not have a good answer for all the Brute Lords. What is important though is that Rainer kind of starts going soon. We are maxed out. Hero is nowhere near maxed out. Rainer has a crappy army as Rainer runs a couple of links through the meat grinder. A must win game for the Italian Stallion. I mean, he doesn't truly have to go, he can also take it very slow. Get more upgrades, create a bank, enjoy the 3 o'clock base, enjoy the 2 o'clock base. That's obviously a play as well. Can he do it, guys? Can he send us into an ace match here? As the Brute Lords make sure there is. Justice reigns from above! Disruptor dies, Archon died. The batteries obviously are not gonna put up a fight either. We got a lot of zealots in the right side. They're gonna run into Lynx, Roaches, Ravages, Bailings. Rainer doing his best goblin impression at the moment. As he's looking at all the right places. Snipes the prism as well. I am hearing some hellos. Maybe it's the neighbor. Picking up a package. Order is package delivery. There's more presents for Ronnie. Rainer is giving us one hell of a present here as the brute lords are raining down. Brutling after brutling. Obviously, hero with blink stalk is always scary. It's a mobile army. I wouldn't hate an infestor or two here just to uh, pin down those stalkers if we can take away one of their biggest strengths and that is how mobile they are one more Archon is gonna get picked off in the center Rainer definitely has hero on the ropes at this point speaking of being on the ropes that army is stuck actually I don't know if we can recall that's not that recalls not that big okay yeah, stalkers can blink I forgot about that <laughs> and he's gonna recall the rest but one of the Archons still die this is such a sweet spot for the brute lords by the way look at that how are you gonna fight that with blink stalkers you're not actually the answer is you're not guys one of the dumbest questions that I've ever asked myself on screen. I mean, I was doing the casting thing, but... No, you don't fight that. Simon and X-Core dies. Hero setting up more counter-attacks. Rainer no... Oh, careful! Now that's a spot where the Blink Stalkers can fight. Rainer making one mistake there. Rainer's in a very good spot, but we can be making mistakes like this. Kudos to Hero, obviously for even allowing a mistake like this to happen in the first place by creating that much chaos with the counter attack. And yeah, that was a big one, guys. We never celebrate too early. There's still a pretty powerful army of here on the other side of the map, but Reyna's army is bigger, is more powerful. If the roaches can start doing their thing. Well, this is apparently how you find good lords in this spot, guys, but that's two or three blood lords, okay? That's not 10. And what a move by Hero, though. Honestly, insane video gaming by Hero. 
I felt that this game was seconds away from ending and now, well, we still have a game. It's an insane game. Very, very entertaining game between these two. Hero creating more chaos. What are the upgrades on these zealots? Plus three underground. Rain only having plus one. Hero now gets on top of this base on the right side. Like if Rainer stays focused, he's fine. But he's probably pretty tilted at this point where he's like, how did I let that happen? What did I do? Why would I ever leave my Broodlords that exposed, that alone? Now this monstrous lead that Raynor had is definitely gone, but I still like it for Raynor. There are no more cannons and batteries in the center. Raynor needs to get on top of this base at 9 o'clock. We cannot let Hero get that base. Raynor sending links over, he's gonna get an easy cancel. This is not a base that Hero is allowed to get, guys. Make no mistake. We say no to that base. Oh man, it sucks that Raynor his links only have plus one, eh? Do they have Adreno Glance, guys? Do they have Adreno Glance? Does Raynor have 40%? What do you mean? With 40% you mean Adreno? Attack speed? Okay. I feel like we should have it, but... It's a lot of Archons. Raynor now drops the... Hydra then. Like, brute lords, this many, they should never die. And obviously, Hero truly pulled the rabbit out of his head by getting the kill on that many brute lords, but... Can he honestly do that again? Well, he's gonna try. We still have a Viper in the mix as well. We're gonna go for an abduct on the Archon. I don't hate it. Let's abduct. Okay, here comes the Stalkers. Blinding Cloud on top of the Stalkers. This could be the game-deciding fight. As sure, a couple of brute lords will fall, but I don't think ever all these brute lords will fall, right? Archons and Stalkers with plus three. They are powerful. Uh, but the Zealous, obviously, they cannot really do a whole lot. Hero really wants to get the base up on the right, left side, excuse me. 9 o'clock. Hero did a good job there, pulling a lot of units out of position, but in the end, all these Zealots will die. And this is not the same hero that is working with 93 probes that we saw on Ancient. This is a hero that's scraping by with 63. He's playing an amazing game because he was supposed to already be down and out, but still think Raynor has it. As long as we don't make a big boo boo. We don't throw away too many links. Still close. Raynor has the better army, has the better attack. Hero is starting to get his hands on this base, though. And that is the one base I said he was not allowed to mine from. Plus one melee looks very underwhelming, right? But it's not so much about plus one uh, melee. Indeed, we now have a lurker then. I, I don't know if I'm in love with it, to be honest. But I, I don't hate it. It's not like it's not a bad choice. It's just that I feel like we're already doing well enough as Parasitic Bomb goes down on the War Prism. I don't think that's enough. But we still have one Corruptor, I think. <laughs> Here I use Zeriko. It's funny. Okay, it's eight Lurkers at once. As the door is still open in the center of the map. Hero is going to go for a Warp In, but these links... With Adreno M plus one. We'll still find a couple of probes. 22 minute game on Neo Humanity. We had high expectations, guys, of Dragon Kaiser gaming against Basilisk. I was hyping it up all week long. I said we had something to look forward to on the most glorious day of the year. Well, so far, this best of seven has been damn awesome. Not a single bad game that I recall. So, Trigger against Dark, especially game one, was very fun. Uh, game two was maybe a bit unfortunate, but. Other than that, all these games have had their moments and been exciting. Raynor wins. We'll get one more. Hero wins. It's all over. Mm -hmm. Couple Zealots getting surrounded. Obviously, no recalls available as Hero just used recall. Getting more and more stock as Hero is getting a bit closer to maxing out. Raynor just really seems to uh, play it very safe here, guys probably felt that if he would have kept on pushing with Ling, Rhodes, Rootlord, he would have been fine. Instead, he's like, alright, you're working with a ground army, I'm just gonna go for the invincible counter army. I'm gonna get Rootlords. I have Vipers, I have Lurkers. You don't have the money to go back into Skytoss. No. I think Reyna was just afraid of the nightmare scenario, where he had the better army, but he would die to counterattacks. So Reyna says, I'm not willing to take that chance. I'm gonna play it ultra safe with Brutes and Lurkers. You wanna run circles around me? Not gonna happen. You're gonna run into me over and over and over again. 
Zalot Stark is a prism and an arc on the do find a good fight here on the right side as Hero does temporarily break Rainer here. Obviously Rainer has a monstrous army on the left side, but uh, Brutlord's still slow. Okay, Brutlords are gonna try to take out this base on the left side. And this is obviously scary though, because if Rainer loses all the Brutlords one time, guys, then it really is anybody's game. Ooh, that's the hive. As the lurkers are a little bit out of position, the lurkers are not fighting yet. Now they do fight. Only a single observer, by the way. I don't know where this observer is. Rainer has taken out the base. But lost two bases in return. The lurker then is exposed. Rainer has seismic spines, but he does not have adaptive talents. Ooh, hero is a merciful god. Let's the lurker then live. That's big, man. That is big. Rainer saved that lurker then. Okay, he doesn't let it live. I no adaptive talents. Oh my goodness, why is this game so crazy? What's happening in the center of the map observer? Armies floating with each other. Ah, that's a problem, guys. That is a problem. No hive and no adaptive talents. It is getting scary. As hero is now going to try to take that base at the top side of the map. 12 o'clock. He has uh, mined out his gold. Oh, Rainer, we have made this hard, mate. We have made this hard. We have made this very hard. Ten Broodlords, nine Lurkers. Come on, mate. Very little creep. 54 drones against only 38 probes. <laughs> Rainer just abducted a settled, guys. Oh, hero with a mistake there. The army actually kind of derping a little as he's setting up maybe multiple surrounds. There are fights happening right now in the center. Rainer cannot lose all these roaches and hydras for free though. Gets on top of the disruptors. Sure, balls are going to go off, but disruptors will fall. Uh, most of the disruptors have died. Big Nova though on the lurkers. Where are the broodlords, Rainer? Rainer, we need our broodies. Rainer, we're not going to bring them over here. They come from the left side, but they were late. 67 army supply against now 78. Oh, oh, oh. But jeez Louise, man. That is an overwhelming graphic. Rainer has lost every single unit that Zork has to offer. Oh, man. There is a Zealot run by happening right now. Rainer is splitting up the Broodlords a little bit. But that's obviously where things can get scary. Can we save our base? Oh, no. The Hatchery is taking a lot of damage. The Zealots kill the Hatchery. Rainer loses another base. Man, it's starting to slip away, isn't it, guys? As the Stalkers have blinked into the main base. I, oh, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. But it's, I think it's starting to all fall apart. What do we have in the top set of the map? Is that a couple links or something for Rainer? Rainer is about to lose all of his tech. Spire is going to get picked off. We still have a chance, obviously. Ooh, that is a Rico. That's going to hurt, baby. Yeah, that's going to hurt. These Rootlers have lost three. Oh, Corrupt is flying on the other side of the map and they are going to harass that base. That's cool. I mean, it's, we're st still in it. Still in it. This game has indeed been over a couple of times, but it doesn't matter. We're still in it. I like this. Now, Hero should immediately build a Void Ray. What Hero needs to do here is immediately build a Void Ray. But sometimes you almost even forget that you have Stargates and that you have Void Rays with Flux Veins. Vayner cancel, please, and he does. Like, he's, now, he's doing this in the most painful way ever, okay? He did get the kill on one of them. There is an overcharge there. He's building one Phoenix, guys. <laughs> it wasn't really needed. The one Void wasn't needed before. and It wasn't a good investment. Now it is a good investment. But he has a Phoenix. Rainer did manage to get 11 probes. Hero is down to double digits. Rainer is now just going to... Oh, this is risky, but I think I like it. The Broodlings are going to make it hard for the Stalkers to get on top of these uh, brute lords. All the Brutes have been taken out, but obviously a lot of Stalkers died in the process of all of that. 97 Supply, what a game, man. One of the best games of the year, guys. In a high-pressure situation, Hero's going to send it for the Brutes. He's going to get one very quickly. He's going to get three very quickly as Rainer shoots at the cooling tower. Okay, the Lynx, though, ravaging that base in the top side. A couple of Zealots are not going to save it. So Rainer takes out a very crucial uh, last mining base. He might not get the base because he's stacking assimilators, but... I'm starting to believe again. Like, if Rainer had 3-3, by the way, on Lynx, man, like, this game would have been ultra over. Oh, careful, Rainer! Careful, careful, careful! Broodlords, I think it's high enough number. And Rainer has actually rebuilt a couple of Lurkers. You love to see it. You love to see it. Whew! 
I think it's good again. <laughs> I know that I'm a yo-yo. And I know it's been intense, but I think it's looking very good again. 20 probes. Not even Hero can make magic happen of 20 probes, eh? Yeah, it's, it's been a crazy game. It's been a wild game. How you doing, Pika? Oh, yeah, that's my face too. But I think we're bringing it home. I, I'm looking forward to the camera pop-up for Rainer. Because this was such a wild game. And I'm sure that his heart is beating. Even Rainer, who is obviously a world champion too. And he's been through it all. He's won a lot of tournaments. These are the crazy games that really bring out the dog in you. As Hero is running out of spirit, he goes for one final forward blink, but that ain't happening. Lurkers, Rudlors, Rainer gets the job done. That's the smile. That's the sign of a relieved man. Woo -hoo -hoo. We are going to an ace match, baby. We are going to an ace match. The most glorious day of the year delivers with the most glorious battle we've had so far as basilisk in a team competition our 50 50 man does it again baby don't you ever doubt our 50 percent player man what a game holy smokes what a game all right <laughs> i loved it mate well done gg yeah. when is the ace it's gonna take a couple minutes uh right now guys we're gonna take we're gonna discuss things as a team i i know what dragon kaisi game is expecting like our ace match is going to be royal blood and let's be honest they are expecting me i'm expecting me i think uh several rainer and trigger are expecting me as well but we're gonna discuss as a team who we are sending out give me one second Sorry, guys, we're just discussing as a team right now. All right, I will let the admin know that we have decided. Is it Roddy, guys? Is it time for the captain? I think it's time. You guys want Roddy. Cyril just said that he also thinks it's the best idea. We send out me. I'm going to go ahead and take a very tiny break, guys. We'll run a couple of ads to make sure we don't have ads in the middle of the game. And after that, we'll be back with the ace match. Who? Of Dragon Kaisi Gaming thinks they can do it out with the big man. All right, we already have it. It's Hero versus Serral, guys. Well, there was no no build up there. It's Hero versus Serral. Oh. <laughs> Hero versus Serral. Tiny break. See you guys soon. We're getting ready. We're almost there. I mean, no matter what happens, this has been an amazing clan wise so far, right? Eh? Thank you, Bruno, for the tier one subby to Nomias. Thank you to Dave Testa for the 500 bits while I was AFK. Sorry, mate, saying cheer. Happy birthday. Did a dono too, I think. Not sure if it went through. Uh, I saw it. Uh, sorry, mate. I disabled my alerts for uh, whenever we are Warriors in game. Of the night, assemble. Roof. Because obviously it is Happy my birthday. Happy birthday, champ. We get a lot of love and I don't want text to speech all the time during these games, especially if the games are great. And that was a great game. And obviously, as much as I love some love and I want to make a living, uh, the focus deserves to be on that game. And we can do our birthday thing in between the breaks. Was it now? Mate, that was a game and a half. Holy smokes. Nice present though, Rainer. At least giving me an ace match on my special day. Uh, well, that was insane. I got myself our first alcoholic beverage of the day. I know it's a little bit early. It's only 4 p.m. And we'll take it easy because I still have a long night ahead of me, but just to calm the nerves a little. I was I was scared from time to time. And at one point I wasn't scared anymore because I thought you had it. But then we lost all of our Brutloids. And once the Stalkers were even in the main base and the Zealots got the kill at the 6 o'clock hatch, I was really scared. I was like, oh no. But yeah, you did a great job in denying his base and I love the Brutloid morph. Uh, on the base next to his gold minerals basically that was great thank the lord that he didn't have one leftover void ray <laughs> if he had one leftover void ray that would have shown up immediately prismatic alignment I would have been very scared oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was scared mate I was scared alright it's ace match time let's do it let's get it on 
final round. Fight! Top right side, it is Hero for the reigning champs, Dragon Kaizi Gaming. Bottom left side, it is the great Iona Sutala for Basilisk, Sero. What a best of seven this has been. Our undefeated record is on the line, was on the line, has been on the line for a while. For the people who don't watch uh, WTL all the time, this is only the third play day of the regular season, so it's still a long way to go. Every match does matter because the way that it works is the higher you finish in the regular season, the deeper you get seeded into the playoffs. And at the moment, there's only two undefeated teams in the league. One of them is on site. That's obviously Maro's team. The other team is a Basilisk. Every other team has already lost at least once. Shows how competitive this league is. After three play days, only two undefeated teams. Hmm. I had a layover in Amsterdam yesterday on my way back to the USA and I didn't... And I noticed Rotterdam on the map. I've been watching you for years and I didn't realize your name was the city you live in. Well, I'm a bit of a fraud, mate. I don't quite live in Rotterdam. <laughs> a lot of people in Rotterdam won't even know the village that I actually live in. I was, however, born in Rotterdam. My passport says Rotterdam. And I did grow up in a city closer to Rotterdam. How many players are still undefeated in WTL? That I don't quite know, mate, at the top of my head, but... Probably not too many. Hero's being... Oh, Hero really wants... What? No! What is he doing? Why would, why would he switch over to an Overlord? We're watching a pro potentially getting first blood. I don't know what happened. Okay, the probe lives in the end. Okay, the probe has no kill. I can see in the bottom right side, guys, that the probe has no kill. That was a terrible moment. To take a look at the Overlord that's chilling in the top side of the map. Sarah is much better than Hero. I think Sarah is better, but it's obviously very close, mate. Almost everyone agrees that Hero is a top two Protoss in the world. And then I think it's kind of 50-50 of a debate on who is actually the best Protoss in the world. But So obviously when you have the best player of their race respectively, the other guy can never be a whole lot better or much better. Can be a little bit better, but not a whole lot. Spike and Nissa Capella. No, I live in Zuidland, uh, Bubo. After I came back from my six-year adventure in America, I did live in Spikenisse for approximately two years, I think. That's when I had the finite flag and all the badges behind me. If any of you guys have been with me for a long time, you guys will remember that setup where I had the balcony too. That was in Spikenisse, and now I live in Zuidland. Huh? <sighs> Best of best of seven. But for these guys, it's a best of one. Zero Hero is a best of one. The entire clan war has been a best of seven. We have adapts into Oracles. Two adapts shedding into the main base. Ooh, Evo block. Gonna make it hard for these adapts to get in range in this round. Clean defense so far by Yona. We are... Oh. Adapts getting on top of uh, the Lynx there, and obviously that's a good trade for the Lynx. I mean, in the end, Sero gets both Adapts without losing a single drone. And even this Oracle is taking a beating. So far, guys. Absolutely perfect! Sero, I don't think, could have done anything better there than what he ended up doing. Uh, Hero shaking it off. He knows that that is not quite the start that he was dreaming of. Now the Lynx are going to try to get on top of the third base. I don't know how many Adapts are there. This observer, man, he, he's he's peaking today, eh? All right, mate. We thank the sponsors. That's awesome. But there are links attacking a third base. I'd like to see uh, if the links can get something done there. Green positioning has been picture perfect. Jonas is not giving away anything. I had a great joke there, but a lot of you guys won't get it, but. I want to say he's cosplaying the Muslim. But I think only Rainer will understand how funny that is. <laughs> As Ray Saros is not giving away anything. We love Ben, guys. It's okay. <laughs> ben can take a joke. <laughs> Two oracles still looking for openings. His hero is scratching his face there. And he's like, man, it's tough. This dude knows everything. He's everywhere. 
The Zealot Charge, by the way, guys, is the first upgrade as the Oracles finally find a tiny opening. And Hero does grab two drones. Queen's Way of Creep, Yona. Okay, Yona's just gonna send it. I'm a little bit surprised by this, but we are just sending it, guys. Roaches, Lings, and Queens are marching to the other side of the map already. Uh, Oracle is gonna go for a stasis. Zero is paying attention. We're only uh, oh, I'm on the roach there. That's unfortunate. Roach is morphing into Ravagers. There are not a lot of cannons and batteries. Army supplies somewhat close. I mean, Zealots with charge are very funny right against Roaches. So if the overwhelming amount of Zealots show up, they can be good. But if the Zealots are in small numbers, they are really not going to be all that good. Hero was not expecting this. Could use battery overcharge there. It would be a decent overcharge. As we even have a creep tumor going down. The overcharge has been planted. Bit of a weird fight. Oracle count is high. We cannot lose the queen. That queen with a lot of energy. It lives. The corrosive ball connects as well. The queen lives. Queen good unit. Double kill for the queens. And I think that's the tipping point right there. As Hero is sitting on a thousand minerals. But he just cannot spend it. The oracle count was high. And that was a scary moment. Because if the oracles overwhelm the queens. And obviously there is no anti-air. But the queen lives. Pylon dies. Battery dies. The third base in shambles. All the probes go down. And it's starting to look like Yona does. Just the Yona things. As he's going to find the zealots and the stalker there as well. The man fully sent it. A 49 drones with queens, roaches, lynx. And a whole lot of ravagers. Gateway unpowered. Cybercore unpowered. Hero is pretty much dead guys. We were down 0-2, we were down 3-2, but the fighting spirit was strong as the oracles tried their luck one more time. And they get a better fight against the queens this time around, but it's a day late and a dollar short. Zero is not gonna let this one go anymore. He is ravaging everything that Hero has. We will stay undefeated. Basilisk goes 3-0 in the regular season after a nil-biter of a best of seven on the most glorious day of the year. Dragon Kaizi Gaming now drops to 1 and 2, guys. The reigning champs off to a rough start. Interview, please. We will definitely do a little interview with the boys, guys. I already told them before the match, guys. Win, lose, or draw. Obviously, we can't draw, but hypothetically. I was like, win, lose, or draw. Let's do a little interview after the best of seven so we can keep that tradition alive. Uh, I think it's fun for Basilisk. Uh, gives them some content as well to work with. And they can really turn our journey into a story. Fortunately, guys, it's a good interview. It's a happy interview. All right, so this is it for our first best of seven. There is another fun best of seven after this, guys, and that is Ice Storm Gaming against Abydos. I will uh, I'll probably stick around for that, and we'll cast a couple of games. But first up, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get a call going with the boys. Let's go. We go 3-0. We stay undefeated. That's awesome. <laughs>